So how's Northeast Ohio doing in this thing called economic competitiveness? I'm here to tell you that despite that global economic meltdown that we're all worried about, there are real signs of progress here in Northeast Ohio. And Karen's gonna talk about some as well, but one I, I particularly wanna to point to is in the area of entrepreneurship, the ability to grow your own business. In the last few years, more than a billion dollars, you heard that right, more than a billion dollars has been invested primarily from people outside of Northeast Ohio, in Northeast Ohio, in a portfolio of promising growing companies. That's a lot different than it was just a few years ago. Early part of this decade, venture capitalists had a two words of advice for entrepreneurs who, wanted, who had a great idea to build a big business here in Northeast Ohio. That advice was, leave town. There was not a worse place in America to be an entrepreneur. That's not me saying it. That's Entrepreneur Magazine, and that's the venture capitalist telling you. That has completely turned around. For example, if you were a close reader of The Plain Dealer, because it was a very small story, <laughs> just this week, a company in Chagrin Falls attracted $4 million, it's called ServoLens, for a new medical device that will address issues related to premature delivery of children. The doctors behind that company are from California. The people who gave them the $4 million are from Kentucky and that dreaded state up north. They're investing in Northeast Ohio because the entrepreneur here is an expert in the medical device industry, which shouldn't come as a surprise because the medical device industry is one of the strengths of Northeast Ohio. That's just one sign of the progress that we're making. And again, you'll hear more from Karen. My next question is, why do we care so, why do we at the fund care so much about government efficiency? There's two reasons. First, the public, through a process that you may have participated in back in 2005, 2006, called Voices and Choices, told us that they wanted something done about the Civil War era system of fragmented government that you're all saddled with trying to make work. The public knows it doesn't work very well and they're trying to figure out a better way to do it. And they wanted someone to tackle it. Second is that local government, if you treated it as a business, is a really big business. In fact, it consumes more than 10% of the region's economic output. A $170 billion economy, we spend more than $17 billion a year on local government, okay? So it's a big business. We better get it right. And what do we want? My last question is, what do we at the fund want to do with you? The fund, most importantly, wants to support local officials who are eager to collaborate with others to make their governments more efficient and make the region as a whole more competitive. You may have heard of a new program that we launched earlier this year called Efficient Gov Now, where we're putting $300,000 on the table to help you collaborate with others. We received 44 qualified applications for that program. We were very excited to have that many. When we started, we thought we'd be lucky if we got 10 to 15, so we got 44. The next step in the process is is winnowing those 44 down to a, to a handful of finalists, and we're gonna put those finalists to the public so they can vote on who deserves the $300,000. That should be a pretty interesting exercise. Also, we wanna try to help you change the system that now requires you to play a game of what I call winner-take-all economic development poker where you have to compete with the neighbor next to you for the economic development deal so you can get your money in. And this is what Matt was talking about. The solution to it is a regional planning and revenue sharing program that allows you all to plan for growth together and benefit from that growth. It's the regional prosperity initiative that your organization is supporting with the mayors and other elected officials. And I'm here to thank you for that support. Thank you for passing that resolution. And I want you to keep pushing it forward and know that there's people like the Cleveland Foundation, the Gunn Foundation, the Community Foundation of Lorain County, Community Foundation of, in Stark County, the GAR Foundation in Akron, 
the Ween Foundation over in the Mahoning Valley, all behind you in this effort. You're not out there alone. Before I turn things over to Karen, I want to risk irritating you as council people by quoting a mayor. I know it's probably bad form to quote a mayor at this setting, but we have a mayor. yeah, we do have a mayor, and I'm actually not going to quote him. I'm going to quote one of his one of his allies. Um, last year, um, Richfield Mayor Mike Lyons said something to me and to a group that is just obviously it's stuck with me, and it really captures what we see why your job is so difficult and why sometimes our job to make our region more competitive is so, so difficult at times. He said the reason we haven't experienced the economic growth that we would like here in Northeast Ohio is we've spent our time and energy because the, the system requires us to spend our time and energy fighting over it rather than planning for it. The good news that I'm here to share with you today is Northeast Ohio is learning how to spend less time fighting among ourselves and more time planning and collaborating together to generate economic growth. And as long as we keep doing that, we'll keep making progress and building a vibrant region. And there's no better person in, the, in Northeast Ohio to tell you about the progress we're making than Karen Rockind of Team Northeast Ohio.